I'm going to show off what our concept is. Uh, we built this framework uh, a little bit before we had our team, but we are going, this is like very far from what our final idea will be. And we plan to work on this really uh, more so without the whole team. So uh, we'll start off talking about the storyline. So uh, Caden will explain that. Yes. So um, basic storyline is loosely inspired by D&D, &D, uh, so the Forgotten Realms. Uh, so you are the final set of heroes, the five last heroes of the intelligent races, and you've been summoned together to defeat the uh, evil lord and his minions um, as you climb his towers, defeating bosses and goons, and the whole lot, uh, gaining powers. Um, it will, it's going to be a single player, um, so you choose one of five characters, and yeah, that's pretty much the basis of the storyline without giving away the entire plot. All right, uh, we'll move on to some like mechanics with how we are going to present this. So uh, we're going to have our level of progression work in a kind of like a dungeon crawler style, where uh, each run there will be three towers with three levels per tower. And then the layout of each level in the tower will be randomly selected from a pool. So then, it will have a different experience every time so that will obviously with a dungeon crawler with that's a single run type kind of deal you really want to have really good replay value so this is kind of going to add to this and that which would further be compounding on top of the fact that we have five different characters with five different play styles so there's a huge amount of different possibilities for uh your playthroughs yeah so similar to your gungeon runs or your uh, dungreed or your binding of isaac where it's select rooms, but it always be different uh, in the room layout, like the, or sorry, the room order, the floor layout. So you never know what's next. Maybe it's gonna be your shop. Maybe it's gonna be your cursed items. Maybe it's gonna be a mini boss. You aren't quite sure until you run into it face first. And then uh, for the gameplay, uh, something that's really important to me, especially in these kinds of games, is really nice movement. And then coming from like someone who plays a lot of like Smash Bros and Smash Melee, movement is really important to me. So we're going to make this a platformer, and we're going to be very particular with the way that the air acceleration and landing mechanics works. So then you can have really nice movement, and we'll have dash mechanics like in Celeste. So then you can kind of be sliding around. So that if you want to speed run the game, you can. But you can also just take your time and kind of like explore everything, go through meticulously, pick up for some collectibles and items and stuff. And yeah. Then admin, yeah. Sorry. For us, it's um, important to have versatility in the way you play the game. Um, so that's why we want to focus on having options for the player. If you want to play slow and methodical, then you can. If you want to just go fast, then you can. We don't want to limit you in your creativity. Yeah, uh, speaking of creativity, uh, we got Rosa here to explain uh, the art direction for our plan. Yeah, so uh, as an indie game lover, uh, I'm really fond of how uh, immersive and unique the styles of indie games are. So I'm kind of drawing on games such as Hyperlight Drifter, Hades, Stardew Valley, and especially since, as Caden and Nick mentioned, we're going to have different uh, stages and different kind of environments and themes for each stages. So by using uh, pixel art and using kind of stylized uh, atmosphere, we're able to kind of create different, or planning to create different kind of environments and different atmospheres uh, so that when you progress through the different stages, you can notice a change in the way, in the locations that you're fighting in and kind of make it really uh, dynamic and different whenever you fight. So yeah, we're planning on using pixel art so that uh, it's a little more, it's a little bit easier to uh, manage all the different backgrounds and kind of create it, make everything cohesive, especially with our fantastical elements, 32-bit sprites as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, okay, and for the music, our music person disappeared. We need help. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's about it for us. Thanks for giving us your time. Excellent. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, looks like uh, we ended just in five minutes, so we don't have uh, too much time for Q&A for that one. But after uh, the remaining presentations, there'll be a chance for us all to hop in lounges and we'll be able to ask questions about, about each game. So uh, I think we'd like to move on to Team 2. Uh, okay, sure. Just give me a second. I'll set it up.
Yep, go for it. Actually, while they're setting up, uh, are there any immediate questions about the game? How about, how about uh, for Team 1? Uh, it seems not, uh, and it seems like uh, Team 2 is ready with their presentation. So, uh, I think you're good to go. Oh, actually, wait, hold on. Uh, is the screen supposed to be just white? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> ah, there, there, there's a, there's a, a glitch with Discord screen sharing. Um, instead of sharing, like, the presentation screen, uh, try, mm -hmm. or if you can, uh, share your whole screen and, uh, and then... Oh, okay, sure. Oh, un unless you have music that you need us to hear. No, 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 it's fine. Okay, uh, give me a second again. <laughs> yep. No problem. Yeah, Discord screen sharing is, is kind of glitchy, but at least, you know, it, it, it's better than nothing. It could be a lot worse. Could be better like than Zoom Skype screen. if anyone remembers. Oh, yeah, better than Skype. You, you can say that again. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Perfect. We can see it now. Is it working? Yep, yep. You're good to okay, go. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, hey, guys. Uh, I'm going to be presenting Parvenu, which is the name of our game for Team 2, and it's under construction. <laughs> so Parvenu basically means a person of obscure origin who has gained wealth, influence, and celebrity. And in our game, we want the player to play as a criminal and trying to gain this kind of criminal reputation, which will be this overarching objective score. And it'll be set in a cyberpunk futuristic world. And it's a 2D top-down pixel art style. So, oh, okay. Similar to uh, Team One, it's also going to be procedurally generated, but it's going to be a 2D top-down room. So I gave an image of Binding of Isaac here. So this is kind of a pretty good example of how the rooms are going to be. They're going to be sprawling out, and difficulty of rooms can change how far away. For example, if this is the starting room, how far away the target room is from there, uh, the types of rooms, the enemies in the rooms, all those kind of things. And in each randomly generated level, the player has to heist the target for now. That's what we're saying is objective. But as we go on, we plan to add some more objectives, like maybe just you know incapacitate a target, uh, go in and get out without uh, getting seen, stuff like that. And obstacles will also be semi-randomly placed in the rooms, so that'll be depending on the difficulty of the level, uh, the type of mission, and some other stuff I guess we haven't worked out fully yet. <laughs> so successful missions increase the player's criminal reputation, and, you know, of course, it gives them a lot of money. And then getting caught decreases their criminal reputation. So first, before I talk about what criminal reputation really is, and what you can do with the money. I'm going to first talk about uh, examples of the obstacles and how they'll be randomly placed in the levels. So there are obviously going to be guards, and they'll have different random difficulty assigned to them. So what this basically means is some guards will have different characteristic traits. They might be faster. They might uh, spot the player a little quicker. I'm kind of going to try and randomize which guards get placed where but still keep the overall difficulty of the room around a certain uh, level. And they'll obviously have pathfinding, so they'll be able to chase the player. They'll also be able to use alarm systems, so they'll be able to pathfind to the alarms. Uh, and these alarms are triggered. They can uh, alert the whole level, so all the guards will be on you know, full alert. They'll be able to spot the player much after. Uh, much faster, be able to find the player. So yeah, we'll, we're still kind of experimenting with what the alarm's you know potential is. Uh, we also plan on having cameras, which are kind of like guards, but they're just static. They'll just be scanning a small area, and uh, we're planning on giving the player upgrades so they can disable alarms and cameras, and stun guards and stuff like that. So example of some of these upgrades. Actually, first we'll talk about how you get them. <laughs> so completing the level earns them their money. So there's going to be a black market. Which is... What is this? Sorry? Uh, it seems someone accidentally left their mic on. Uh, oh, oh, they okay. deleted it. It's great. I, I keep going. I got about one minute left. Okay, sure. 
So uh, there'll be a black market outside of the levels which they're going to use to buy uh, parts and augment themselves. These are the upgrades, and the upgrades will generally give new mechanics or upgrade a stat that they already have. And the player will have a limited amount of upgrades, and but then the limit can also change as like the player progresses. So we have some examples of just quick concept art with our artists drew. So examples are like the uh, eyes could be upgraded, the arm could be upgraded to make it more. Uh, you can either choose to make it a bit more like tactical and uh, use it for stunning the enemies and stuff like that, or you can go for more utility and disabling alarms. You know, going moving quieter or moving faster. Like there'll be a lot of different uh, ways that players can mess around with upgrades combinations. So as they get this criminal reputation. Their augment limit increases. They'll be able to get new purchases, uh, sorry, purchase new upgrades and augments. There'll be new type of room types which will be unlocked, and that those will be randomly mixed in to create the level. And obviously, the player will get more rewards from their missions. But there are also some drawbacks, such as harder guards are unlocked, mission length increases, and then uh, room difficulty also increases, which is just uh, the level that of difficulty, all the sum of the difficulty of the rooms should equal to, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so some inspirations we have are Metal Gear Solid Stealth style. So this is like a very good inspiration for the feel of the game should be, where the player is kind of uh, weak and just needs to avoid enemies. It's going to be a 2D top-down pixel art style, where it's not just directly overhead and, you know, I think the same style as like finding a of Isaac and stuff like that. And uh, this is from Mark of the Ninja. This is just to show that like our enemies are going to have the same kind of field of vision cones that they'll use to track the player. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks. All right. Thank you very much. That's excellent. So uh, we'll go on to team three. And I believe team three uh, shared with me. Yep, they, uh, they shared with me their, uh, their video. Uh, so I will quickly uh, lo oh, load it up and then share my screen. Uh, let's see here. Hope hopefully uh, Discord lets me and it doesn't glitch out. All right. Okay, can everyone see it? Yeah, I can see it. Excellent. All right. Uh, so uh, I'll give you all uh, one second to hop on the stream before I play it. All right, uh, and let's see, let me know if you can't hear it. And go. So because of Corona, it seems like more and more of your friends are wanting to play multiplayer games. Huh? Oh, you don't have any friends? That's okay, because your not friends you haven't talked to in years are now contacting you asking you to play. Talk about having a social life. <laughs> You've probably never heard of it, but there's a small game that took off called Among Us. It's super indie and underground. It's like a game similar to Mafia, except it's not similar to Mafia, because it's like a watered-down version. It's simple in that there's only imposters, and that's all. But what if there wasn't a watered-down baby game, and instead we made it better? What if everyone had an ability, just like how imposters can sabotage? and, you know, murder. <laughs> a game where you can gain experience points per match to unlock cosmetics and custom kill animations. A version of Among Us that has more roles, so you're not just the lame civilian. Every game for three hours straight. What if we change the mini games from this? Oh, here we go. All right, don't let him down. <laughs> this. Now, I know you might be thinking, but if you bring back the dead, they'll know who killed them. 
Okay, but what if the kills were different? What if the kill took 20 seconds, like a poison? And if the doctor sees them in that time, they can heal them. Some examples of other types of roles that could be added, which are totally not massively ripped off by games like Ultimate Werewolf or Town of Salem, would be a guard who can gift a shield to one person after every meeting. And that shield can then be deployed for 30 seconds. A janitor, as someone who can check vents. A witch, who places a curse and allows you to remotely mess with the player movement of another character, disabling the controls for a few seconds. Now, I know you may be thinking, but Among Us has already been made. What's the point? And with that, I leave you with a quote. First the worst, second the best. All right. Okay, so uh, is there any uh, is there any other uh, presentation from uh, Team Three? No, or that's it. All yeah. right. We're open to questions now. Well, yeah, we have. Hey, a I have a question. That was amazing. <laughs> How did you make that? Like, why did you find the time? There's so many midterms. Oh my gosh. I I have another question. Um. um why why the doom animal crossing thing for the mini games is, um, is there going point. to be a combat system yeah so honestly we just decided on a concept on monday so there's still a lot of things we're trying to flesh out but um yeah one thing we're looking to focus on is to improve um the mini games for sure um just regards to choosing that in particular i don't think uh it's too specific like we're not going to copy that but we are open to uh doing a variety of more interesting mini games yeah it was just mostly just for fun i guess <laughs> i can respect that <laughs> yeah that that was pretty awesome i i did i did enjoy the video um <laughs> all right so uh i think uh that might be all, uh, that might be yeah, all the, the bonus question time uh, we have for this one. So, is Team 4 ready? Yes. I have the presentation. All right. Go ahead and uh, start sharing when you can. All right. Okay, is everyone uh, from my group here? Yep. Hello. Yep. All right. I have the presentation ready. Okay. Uh, are we starting? Go for yeah. it. Yep, good to go. All right. Hey, everyone. We are Game Dev Team 4, and we are super excited to show you our game tonight. Our game is a co-op puzzle game with a story featuring two secret agents, Agent X and Agent Y. And to start, we're actually going to hear a little bit from them both. Hey everyone, I'm Agent X. And I'm Agent Y. And we're the two best spies from the headquarters. At least by our standards, anyway. Right. Anyway, we have a cool little dream machine doohickey that we use to see into people's dreams and solve crimes. It sounds a little strange, but you get used to it after the millionth time. Even though it can be a little frightening. Quiet! Don't tell them about that! Sorry! Even though the cases we solve can be scary and spooky, we always have a great time working together. Do we? Of course! All we want now is to get promoted. It would be amazing to solve some big crimes together. What's this? A letter from headquarters? Dear Agent X and Agent Y, congratulations! It's finally your day for a promotion. You've done such great work with the small crimes, and now I'm putting you on a bigger case. There's been a malicious group of rapscallions committing acts of treason against the headquarters. Headquarters is giving you this new model of dream machinery that allows you to enter minds as physical spaces. 
You will use this technology to find important information and save the headquarters reputation. If you ask any questions, you will be executed. Now back to work. Wow, I can't wait. But I wonder why they don't want us to ask questions? You're asking questions already! Let's just get on with it and solve the case! All right, so for our game concept as a whole, our game is a 3D first-person co-op puzzle game with a focus on asymmetrical gameplay. The two players will work together from separate locations to solve various puzzles and mysteries. The two players will each play as one of the agents, cooperating to solve crimes by entering people's subconscious, where each of them will obtain information related to the story through completing small puzzles. The game's tone will start out rather lighthearted, but gradually becomes more dire and serious as players progress further in the game through cumulative information gathered from each puzzle. The gameplay loop involves entering a person of interest's mindscape, which will function as a level, where players will work through puzzles, where one player has information regarding the solution of the puzzle, and, then, and they must relate it, relay it to the other player, who has access to the tools required to complete the puzzle. Once the puzzles are completed, the level is finished, and the mindscape ends, and then a new mindscape will be unlocked. Overall, the goal of the game is to offer a fun, brain-teasing experience for anyone willing to take the challenge up with a friend. In addition, this concept art that we have here on this slide depicts the two agents in the office room, one testing out the dream machine and the other deep in thought. Though this scene wouldn't technically actually occur in-game, since the agents have different separate roles, it emphasizes the cooperative aspect that the game focuses on. And lastly, just as a demonstration, we have a pair of mock-up rooms that we've done in Unity. This is a sample of the office space, and this is the sample of a potential mindscape. In this case, we have a simple brick room with a couple paintings on the side. Now, uh, just a quick run-through of how one puzzle might work. Say you have one player in this room with the paintings. There may be some coded distinguishing factor about one of the paintings that the player in here has to determine. Then they have to relay information about the painting back to the player in the office, who may have some documents or images or something to flip through where they have to find a representation of the painting and scan it or something to count a successful puzzle. For a puzzle of that complexity, one mindscape probably encompasses about three puzzles. And finally, we did have a bit of BGM made, but it's not in the presentation, so I don't think I can play it over the room, unfortunately. But if people want to hang out in the lounge afterwards, I'd be happy to show it off. Any questions? All right, I think we got one minute for questions before we, before we move on. Um, well, well, I'm curious, since this is really detailed, like, is this uh, an existing project or a transfer project, or is this... Uh, uh, no, this brand is new? brand new. Oh my goodness, y'all been in productive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, if there are no other questions, then I think we are good to, to go on to Team 5. Stop streaming then. Yep. Thank you. That was, that, was, that was awesome. Hold on. Give me one second. Yep. Okay. Is the stream showing? I'm just confused. <laughs> All right. Hello, uh, I'm going to be presenting on our game Spell Rise by our team Mana Juice, uh, aka Team 5. So, Spell Rise is going to be a 2D top down pixel adventure game where the player aims to become one of the strongest witch or wizard in the world. To do this, the player is challenged to seek out new spells taught by masters of an art or experiment with currently learned spells to unlock even more. As a test of the player's skills, we aim to have a tournament where they can go up against other players to showcase 
what they have accomplished. So we have uh, on the previous slide as well, we in this one, we have some early designs of like what our characters could look like and as well as um, some different regions based off of our story elements um, and like different outfit uh, designs. And they're very nice and beautiful in my opinion. Um, and then we have like a wide variety of game influences. Uh, for example, we looked at Sky Children of Light for um, sort of how the realms are in like areas are segregated, uh, Dungeon Incorporated for their PVP system. We are looking at Genshin Impact for um, some of like their overworld um, sort of look, and then Brawl Stars for their top down. Um, and then the, all of the games that we have in mind are like what helped us uh, give a reference for the mood that we aim to achieve with our game, as well as um, envision what our game could potentially look like after we like develop it further. So our development goals with uh, the upcoming months is to like have a first area done. Ideally that first area will be our um, tutorial, which one of our uh, artists like designed a beautiful tutorial um, just today. Uh, and then we hope to have like a tournament prototype as well as some basic spells which our programmers have developed um, sort of a drawing system, which is really interesting. Uh, and then we hope to like flesh out some UI systems within um, the next couple months. And we have some ideas about that as well. Uh, it's not as flashy as some of the other ones, but any questions? All right, we have about uh, two, three minutes for questions, if anyone has any. Yeah, so. Because you mentioned a tournament style, um, how much in the way of like a utility or creative spells are you planning on having? Do you think you could actually have like environment building? We were thinking of a wide variety of different spells. So what I uh, pitched to my team when we were um, deciding our game idea was that there would be um, sort of like more sorcery type spells. There's like hexes, uh, summoning. Um, there would be like familiars that you could have to help uh, battle and stuff, uh, potions, so a wide variety of different spells. And um, our writers basically put together like different groups. So elemental based magic is 100% involved in what could potentially be seen in the tournament. All right. Sounds cool as hell. Thank you. Yeah, it certainly does sound really awesome. Any other questions? Okay. Um, if there are no other questions, then I think we should be good to uh, to move on to the next team, which I believe is Team Six. Yep. Yeah, thank you. That was awesome. Let me just get, uh, get it set up. Yep. Go ahead. It's gonna be hard to top the stuff that came before us, but we'll sure try to at least show our idea. So, um, just start when we're ready. Uh, yep, you're good to start. Or oh, actually, well, well, actually, wait, 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 actually, one second for everyone to everyone to yep. jump on the stream. Uh. All right, I think you're good to go. Okay, so hi everyone. My name is Gwen, and joining me is uh, Julia and Tom, and we're Team Hello. Six, and we're presenting our our concept, which is not not as far ahead as um, yet the goose before us, but we have something we want to present. Um, so this is our ambitious plan for your game. Um, it's going to be a tactic style um, type of game, and it takes place in space and in other planets. And in each planet, it's essentially our levels, and you to expand your map, you you know conquer each planet and such. Um, when you do attack on the planets, you can designate how much of your troops you are willing to risk, and your troops would have like different skills and such. And there will also be a resource element in the game um, where you have to manage your troops and um, the planets. And yeah. Um, this is um, one of our concept arts for it. Uh, 
it's going to be 2D pretty much. And yeah. Uh, and so for the for the first phase of our project, uh, we're we'll focusing on the core gameplay loop, uh, which would be the tactical sort of turn-based combat uh, where you sort of manage a fleet of units, uh, ships, you could say, and then uh, sort of uh, optimize their play against the enemy enemies. And uh, uh, we will be making a series of levels and. Uh, uh, We'll be bypassing the sort of resource management system in this phase, and uh, um, uh, for each level that you select, we will have a sort of predetermined uh, enemy spawn, but uh, we'll also have some kind of semi-random variations in them uh, in terms of uh, how they look, or maybe the minor sort of uh, army compositions of the of the op 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 opposing side, and then so art-wise. Um, uh, we've decided to make 3D environments on which there will be 2D assets. So the art team will be focusing on making the level backdrops, the units, the UI and materials and all that. Um, and the story for the first phase will also be very simplistic. It, it'll be relatively linear and that's where the sort of level selection comes in. Uh, sort of as you uh, finish each episode, you sort of unlock the next episode. I think you can think of this as sort of a ca campaign in uh, our game and uh and also like when we're starting to develop i think uh fun elements is something we need to consider but it's not something that we can kind of uh quantify so i think one of the things that um we need to think about is to create a sort of uh rock paper scissors dynamic of different units so that you know you, you don't go in on one sort of unit and uh yeah the rest will come out as we play test and uh, this is what what it'll look like uh in a kind of a tactical uh battlefield kind of look uh the the unit that you select will have a portrait on the left and then uh, on the bottom will be the vitals of each unit and on the right there will be different actions depending on the unit that you select and that's it yeah and now we have just like about a minute and a half left of our presentation and so we would like some feedback since we are still very early on and more feedback if anyone has any right now for our q a have questions feedback yeah perfect two minutes of feedback uh i would say i i really do like uh, like your idea i've always been a really big fan of uh, of tactical um uh turn based or, or tactical kind of games uh, well, what, what I, I think I'd ask is, uh, is I noticed, so, so on, on this last slide, you mentioned uh, you would have kind of the stats and then action. Uh, were you, were mm -hmm. you planning on implementing like a, a, a wide number of different actions for each unit? Uh, uh, or, oh, sorry, can you finish it? Finish? Oh, no, no, that, that, that was it. Okay, so um, our current idea is primarily, we're still in the middle of discussing, but the idea is you, uh, the troops have a general attack associated with their type, so range has kind of a longer attack circle. As uh, so they have a general attack, you might have special kind of general troops, kind of like um, with a special additional ability, maybe a healing type or well, repair. And then there's a chance that you might be able to say, uh, one of our ideas is that there might be battles on planets. And so you could call down like say a special strike from above. Mm, I see. I, I, I would definitely recommend, uh, it, if you can, uh, finding a way to give different units different kinds of actions. Like perhaps there's a, a shield or ship or whatever that, that is able to increase defense of the units around it or, uh, or a long range ship that's able to, to kind of, for once, snipe a unit for a, a bunch of damage. Because um, I think that, that always makes it uh, really interesting. To me. Awesome. Um, do we have time for one more if anyone has any? Yep, yep. Um, I, so you said that it would be 2D assets on a 3D background. Were you perhaps inspired by Paper Mario? Uh, that's one of our, like, the idea is, yeah, no, Paper Mario is one of the inspirations for that. Oh, very video. cool. The main reason why we're going with that approach is more practical because 2D art is typically easier to do for 3D, especially with our, we only have one artist. Oh, but I feel program, that. But we're using Unity as our plan since it's easy to develop in, but it's more easier to develop 
3D in Unity than 2D. Mm. So you have this kind of contrast. Mm. So the idea is to set it up as a 3D environment, program in three dimensional, so like that kind of using the three dimensional code while it looks 2D, either with that kind of Paper Mario aesthetic or maybe more top down, um, kind of uh, Shovel Knight esque, where there's different free physical layers, but it all comes together in a 2D art style. Yeah, no, it's super interesting. I really enjoyed the concept. Mm-hmm. No, it's mainly a practicality. Um, uh, we might have enough time just for one more, if anyone has one. Uh, if not, uh, well, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, uh, there was there was one game that I that I remember I used to play that 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 to me uh, had really good um, rock paper scissors style combat, which is made by one of our partners, Blackbird Interactive. It's called um, Homeworld Deserts of Karak. It is. It is, uh, as tactical games go, it's one of my favorites. I just thought I, yeah, if, if you're looking for another game to, uh, for inspiration, um, well, you could always check that out. Awesome, writing it down. Mm-hmm. Yep, all right. So, uh, in that case, I think we're good to go on with Team 7. Hello, Team 7. Um, okay, so, uh, unfortunately, the team lead has a midterm, so he won't be able to speak. But we do have the presentation ready. And I'm uh, just sorry, one of the other team leaders is going to stream it. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's... Awesome. Great. Okay. Can, uh, can everyone see this? Uh, yep. Awesome. Cool. So let's get started. Uh, so our concept is MediQuest. That's our working title for now. And it is a medical simulator. And that uh, the logo here is actually um, concept art made by our artist, Jenny. So as well as this, the, the PowerPoint slide. So quick shout out to her. <laughs> here are team members for team seven. And a lot of them aren't here today, but uh, we'll look forward to their amazing work in the product. All right, so just as a quick, uh, to quickly touch upon the inspiration for the project is our, so our team lead Payam is actually a former med student and he entered in, in the ER for a whole year. So he, he had this background and he showed us this um, sketch when we first met and like the whole team met and it was really, really interesting. And we all just hopped onto the concept and started shooting our own ideas into it. Um, so we wanted to create like an informative an informative game about different medical conditions and just to sort of emulate what it's like working in the ER while still making it interesting and fun to play. So after a lot of discussion, we decided on a final concept, this MediQuest, a medical simulator, and we decided to make it a story-driven game. And your objective is to play as a medical intern while learning about all these different symptoms, all these diagnoses, and getting to know different patients, coworkers, and other doctors, the final goal of becoming a resident surgeon at the hospital. So just to go over the core gameplay loop, we have this um, daily routine. And it's kind of inspired by Papers, Please, Loosely, in the sense that there will be multiple days and sometimes there'll be special events. Uh, But on a regular day, this is what it would look like. So you'd start the day uh, in the break room, which is kind of like the on-call room. And then you'd go out and diagnose different patients by talking to them. And then through this dialogue system that we're still figuring out uh, to collect their symptoms and try to diagnose them. After that, if you if there are any procedures to be done, you'll be performing those in sort of like mini games. And finally, you would observe a surgery. Since you're a first year student, you'd observe a surgery um, being done by a senior resident. And we're still trying to figure out how to make that more than just a cutscene. But hopefully, there's something interesting there that we can f- work out. Uh, and then there's the end of the day. But optionally, before you end the day, you can speak to patients who are just in the hospital for long term care and they'll have their own little stories to tell you. So there's there's as much story as you want there to be in the idea that you, just, you can go and talk to people as much as you'd like. 
The goals and objectives for a game is number one, to correctly diagnose the patient. This is the first part that is introduced to the player and the most important part of the game. And through diagnosing patients, we hope that uh, especially our team lead can teach uh, all the players about different diseases and medical conditions, and we can learn uh, about them through interacting with unique patients and symptoms. And the second is to handle emerging, emergency situations. So instead of just having a mundane daily routine, we want there to be something special each day or every few days, and you would have to react to those mini games, emergency procedures. Uh, and the third is to explore morality. We wanted each character or recurring patient to have their own personality and their own story. So when you talk to them, it feels like you can truly to know them and make decisions for their lives in your own. And we're still figuring out how many characters we can add into the game and all the different options. So look forward to that. Uh, just some additional information to throw out there. So our target audience is pretty much anyone, especially those who are interested in medicine, surgery, or health science in general. Uh, we do think that it, it might end up being like PG-13 if it gets a little uh, descriptive, because obviously like surgery and whatnot. Um, and in terms of platform and style, for now we're developing for PC and uh, we're going to have top-down stylized 2D graphics. That is all. Any questions or comments if we have time? <laughs> uh, I think we have time for uh, one, one or two questions. Um, so, uh, any, any questions? Uh, will this be like more focused on, I don't know, education or realism, or will it feel more like a, a, like a balanced video game with like technical, like mechanical skills involved? So we are trying to find a balance, but in terms of approachability, none of the gameplay is going to be particularly difficult. It's going to be more about like paying attention to detail, I think, uh, when you diagnose patients. Uh, and there is going to be like, like we mentioned, sort of mini stories that you can have while talking to patients. There's going to be an overarching story arc uh, as well. And uh, so it, it isn't going to be mechanically difficult in the mini games. Um, and we're going to try to keep like the stories and the testimonies like realistic in the sense that you know they're real diseases and real struggles that patients have. But um, we'll be focusing a little less on emulating the exact procedures perfectly because it's it'll be a little bit more about the story. I appreciate that. Yeah, because I'm I'm in a health science program that's not at the UBC. Okay. I'm excited for your game. Yeah, thank you. Sounds great. Thank you. We're excited thank to share it. All right. And I think that's all the time uh, we have for questions. So now uh, we're on to the next team, Team 8. Awesome. Thank you. No Hello, job. I'm Team 8, or the team leader for Team 8. Can you hear me? Test, yep. test. Yep. Perfect. So let me get this presentation up and going. Just one second here. Can we see it? Uh, give me one sec to click on it. Oh, uh, it seems that we're having the same uh, the same glitch that that, uh, that team one was having. Let me uh, see if I can fix that. Yep. Just one second. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, that's, uh, oh yeah. There we go. Uh, wait, can we oh, see on. it now? Oh. Uh, so, uh, hmm. I believe the, oh, oh yeah, no, the way we fixed it for team one was, uh, instead of sharing, um, just the, the slide set, I uh, tried sharing the whole screen. Oh, and see here that, we go. Uh, Can we see it now? There we go. Now we're good. Perfect. So I'm happy to introduce to you name pending the casual action RPG with trains. That's our working title. Uh, we still need name ideas. So after this presentation, if you have any ideas, please let me know and uh, we'll consider it. Uh, so, starting off, our game is based upon the exploration of a massive world, uncovering the darkest secrets that lay within by train. 
And you'll notice that train is an acronym. But to actually discover what this acronym stands for, you'll have to play this game. Uh, you get to start in one of many regions spread out across space and time. And your goal as the player is to save the people from the grasp of an unknown force. If I were to tell you what this force was, it would be a spoiler, so there would be no point in playing the game. However, I will let you know that it's neither evil nor good. Um, so our game is a RPG to begin with. Uh, to be more specific, it's a casual action RPG. It has elements from games such as Skyrim, but it also has elements from more creative games such as Minecraft. We wanted a game that can be enjoyed by all, and yet at the same time allow people to share their creativity. That's why we don't believe in locking people into random number generation. When you find a tool, whether it's a weapon, whether it's a quest item, we don't care what you want to do with it. If you want to, you can recycle it, or because we don't want to tell you how to play the game, you can upgrade it. Additionally, you can make your own tools. Perhaps you want to cut down a tree. It's my goal, as well as the goal of a couple of other members in my team, to allow trees to be cut down, to allow you to harvest wood, to harvest ore nodes, etc., similar to some parts of the map in Skyrim, and you can create your own tools. We'll also have extensive character customization, a staple of the RPG genre. And every ability, every item, every skill in the game is usable. You can play the game the way you want to play and become a force that even the spirits will be afraid of. Meaning, let's say you defeat a boss. And that boss has a skill you really want. Don't worry, you can get that skill. If he's throwing fireballs, you can somehow do that exact same thing. If she, I don't know, if she can jump super high, you can too. You can become that superhero that you want to become. And, best of all, you can play with your friends and experience up to 16 times the fun. Now, 16 times, that X is not times is actually a variable. You can play with as many friends as you like with no limitations, whether that's 1, 10, 20, 30. I mean, as long as you have a server that can support that many players, you can play with however many you want to play with. So a couple of specs of the game is going to be third person, stylized low poly, massive, and I say absolutely massive, around seven kilometers by seven kilometers um, for our initial map that we're working on. Additionally, uh, for our server backend, it's going to be using Mirror, which I find is an awesome networking uh, library if anybody else wants to implement networking and are looking for a way to do it. Um, and now I believe it's time to announce our first release, which will be in early January. Do we have any questions? Yeah, uh, how long do you expect to be working with this game? Because this sounds uh, like on the scale of some AAA releases. About three months. Now, I know that sounds kind of, I don't know, unrealistic, but a lot of this is just down to architecture. If you're able to create 10 items a day, right, and you have 10 days, that's 100 items. And that's not entirely unrealistic. Um, a couple of technical difficulties which people typically run into with games like this is world creation, uh, sprite creation, models, etc. Um, my team were very focused on creating the tools to make games efficiently. And with experience, I believe that this is completely possible. Maybe not the full vision, but at least a subset that people can enjoy and have fun with. Okay. Do we have any other questions? And in, is this a, to, a start from scratch project, or is this like existing, continuing? This is start from scratch.
All right. Perfect. Uh, I, sorry, just a quick thing. Go ahead. Um, yes. I was going to suggest the name Off the Rails. But Off I feel the like Rails. I like that's it. A, I that's a that little down. close to Unrailed, though. Another uh, but, great game. Yeah, it is a great game. But also, um, if you want, I'd love to message you later and come up with more names because I love coming up with names. Sure. Send me say. all the names you can. You and got it. Anybody who comes up with a good name uh, will be credited. God bless. I love wordplay. All right. Awesome. Thank you, my dude. All right. Excellent. Okay. So it looks like now uh, we are good to move on to uh, Team 9. So I believe Team 9 shared with me their presentation. So I'm going to quickly uh, open it up. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, I'll give give everyone a a minute to jump on. Yep. Uh, is anyone from from Team Nine uh, here at the moment? Oh, by the way, it seems someone still has their uh, there seems to be letting a little bit of mic. That's right. That just noticing in case they end up. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, I think we should be good to go. Uh, all right. Uh, well, I, I'm assuming everyone can can see the video. Uh, let me know if you can't hear it. And go. All right, and that was Team Nine's trailer for for Mythos. So uh, uh, just for a little bit of context, uh, Team Team Nine, I believe, is the is the only um, returning team who also developed their game uh, last year. Uh, and uh, I, I, w I was here last year, so if anyone does have any or have any questions, uh, I might also be able to answer them. Uh, so so let me know, because because uh, yeah, I. Uh, I did a live stream with them, and I, I, I asked them everything I could about the game, so... I can I, also I say that I had been on their team, so oh, I yeah, could right. also potentially answer questions in, a, in place for them. Yep. Uh, if there are none, uh, I'd also like to encourage you... Uh, they, they stream their development on uh, on Twitch, so uh, so if you want to uh, check that out, uh, feel free. I'm sure it'll be... It'll be it, would be great. Uh, and then I think we're good to move on to Team 10. Alrighty, I'll share my screen here. Go for it. Oh, I'll... I, I meant to hit stop sharing and I accidentally left. <laughs> Sorry about that. Alright. Alright, can you see it? Uh, yep. Alright, awesome. So... Uh, this is our RPG game concept, no name yet. Uh, we will be looking for names, so if anyone has any suggestions, just let us know in the chat or something. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, this will be a multiplayer RPG game on PC. Our gameplay will be an open world, top-down pixel art RPG with Souls-like combat and a focus on engine, ambience, and atmosphere. Uh, and the audience will be for everyone. So the gameplay will focus on Souls-like combat with several different combat styles. Uh, there will be many different options for uh, movement, such as dodging, uh, rolling, blocks, parries, magic abilities, range abilities, depending on your preferred build. So all of these can be combined in different ways and uh, played however you want it to be played. 
Uh, for enemies, we will have a dynamic combat with AI that telegraphs with his motion. So this is more than just your average uh, watch these visual cues against this boss and then dodge and then start attacking him a bunch. It's more you kind of have to focus and uh, react with what the boss does more than just seeing very telegraphed moves. Uh, our RPG will have less grunt enemies and more large-scale tough enemies to take on with other players. Uh, and it'll be open world to explore, but there will be uh, there will be uh, kind of restrictions based on level because if you go into like a very high leveled area, you're not going to do so hot. Um, and then we will have multiplayer raids later on against uh, bosses, and those will be very unique, uh, kind of puzzle-based uh, raids where uh, you have to kind of explore like an area and take it on. Uh, for lore, uh, this is kind of general lore. So it will be set in a time period beyond ancient civilization and before the Industrial Revolution, uh, utilizing medieval technology with hints of ancient civilization and their practices across the land. So this will be set in a, a time after some kind of big uh, change in the world where uh, they got rid of old practices and they're moving into like a new medieval kind of era. era. There will be focuses on high fantasy, which is an environment that has its own rules and physical laws, often involving legendary heroes, and also perhaps some elements of dark fantasy, which are horror elements, such as Lovecraftian ones. Uh, there will also be political climate between nations with alliances and territorial battles, and we would also like to include some aspects of civil war within a kingdom. Uh, and there will be books scattered across the world uh, pertaining to kind of like the world politics, folklore, letters, etc. And this is just kind of extra lore for people who want to feel more immersed into the world, like Skyrim and The Witcher. Uh, for art, our workflow will be starting with concept art, and taking this concept art, we will make three models and animate these and turn it into pixel art. And now you might be wondering, why are we using 3D modeling for a pixel art game? So we're planning to have a pipeline for rendering 3D models to sprites in real time. And this will greatly reduce workload. Uh, so drawing and shading will be more automated so we won't have to create uh, hundreds, of hundreds of different sprites. And yeah, we'll make it a lot more efficient. So as you can see, this is a little bit of a concept taken from dead cells. Um, so they start with this 3D model, kind of basic shapes and all that, and with the animation, and then they render it through a pipeline, uh, a 2D render, and then that's the final image in the, in the game. And here's another example, uh, an animation of a combo attack. Uh, and as you can see, uh, you can easily adjust keyframes and change animation speeds and attack timings to your liking. Uh, reusing assets and easy implementation. So as you can also see, um, it's easy to add different weapons or armor to old models and uh, animate them easily without having to redraw every single sprite one by one and reusing assets from other models to create new models. So this will once again make the game much more efficient and not having us to make so many different uh, pixel art sprites. And here's some kind of general uh, ideas for like what our art wants to be. Um, the top left has some uh, different creatures, uh, some interesting designs, otherworldly designs that we're thinking of. And then that middle kind of foresty area is kind of the re resolution we're looking for. Uh, yeah. And then here's some more concept art. Uh, the left and the right sides are taken from a anime slash manga called Made in Abyss. Uh, very interesting. Um, and yeah, this middle stuff is just kind of random little creatures and designs, just kind of otherworldly designs that we want our bosses and uh, kind of ambient creatures to look like. And finally, we have music and sound. Uh, so our soundtrack will mostly be orchestral composition uh, with a lot of focus on ambience coming from strings, wind instruments, and piano. So kind of think uh, Breath of the Wild and how ambient their music is kind of blends in with your environment. And sound design will be a focus on atmosphere, emergent, and subtlety. So for some examples would be grass rustling, the crinkling of leaves, footfalls in snow, and shuffling of armor during movement. And yeah, that's our general idea. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, do we have any questions? What program are you guys using to do that thing where you turn the 3D model into pixel art? 
Um, that will just be uh, some built-in stuff. Well, not built-in stuff. We're going to write stuff into Unity, and it's going to render it real time so that there can be lighting and stuff. It won't. It's not going to batch at all. I mean, maybe. I didn't plan it originally, though. I just uh, more meant that you would render models at a lower resolution and then maybe do some other uh, shaders or whatever to maybe give a, a tune look to it, like Legend of Zelda or something. It looks oh, really okay. cool. Yeah, flood, but yeah, yeah, it'll just be written directly into Unity. Oh, nice. We can maybe take one more question. All right. Uh, if there are no other questions, then I think uh, we are, well, we will conclude the battle of the concepts. So uh, first, I'd like to, to thank all of you guys for presenting. Uh, you did an amazing job. Uh, these these concepts look really good. Uh, a lot of them are, are very, very promising. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I definitely recommend uh, a lot of a lot of these uh, project ideas are very ambitious, which is great. Um, I would definitely recommend uh, for team leads uh, to take a look at our uh, our quest board, and um, and if you think if you can foresee in the future, uh, you might need some help with something in particular. Uh, do not hesitate to use it. Uh, it's always a good idea uh, if there's anything you're particularly missing to um, to make a post in the quest board and see if some people can help out. Uh, yeah. uh, one last thing. Uh, our costume contest 